the constant extreme wind. It is unrelenting. Oh my goodness, nearly every day has extreme wind. We might get one, if we're lucky, two days a week where it's fairly still, but most of the time it's really, really windy. And this isn't even really, really windy. It's gonna um, pick up this afternoon. So we'll be inside for the rest of the afternoon. Um, it's not usually this windy at this time of year. Usually in September, you um, have the winds really pick up. It's the beginning of August now, but we've been having extreme winds all of July. So I'm hoping that September won't be as bad as this. And we just got it early this year because it's another month of this, another two months of this is going to be really unpleasant. <laughs> are still doing really well. We haven't lost any more for a while. If they need to get really feathered. They're supposed to be fully whoop, they're supposed to be fully feathered by now. As you can see they've still got some of their down for downy fur on them. Yeah, it's alright. But they're getting feathers on their body so hopefully in the next week we can get them out onto pasture. And uh, it has to be really sheltered because they don't do well in wind and the, the wet. So um, it has to be quite sheltered, but we'll hopefully get them out onto pasture and um, get these guys free ranking. that I planted a while ago all along this border is starting to do really well. I'm getting new growth. We've also got these volunteer pumpkins coming up so it's a bit cold for pumpkins but I'm thinking of digging them up and transplanting them and putting them somewhere warm so once the weather warms up a bit more um, look at that we can um, get them out quickly and hopefully get a head start on our um, pumpkin season. Look at that. Oh, so much new growth on the crowns. So awesome. And they're doing really well. I thought I had a couple here but there's one here. It's getting new growth. So it's doing really really well. These are all my seedlings that I brought from my old house that I'll transplant somewhere, um, especially once the um, veggie patch um, is operational down the bottom because the other one's full. I've got lots of mint. This is a lychee, which is a tree tomato. It lasts a couple of years. Lemon balm, super healing. This is a ground chestnut. The sweet potato hated the frost, so it just didn't survive. This is sage. Tiny garlic. This is more mint. And mint, um, thyme, rosemary, oregano, more rosemary, a goji berry. Now I thought I killed this because I left it out in the field, but I think I'm getting new shoots there. Let's see if I can get it a bit closer. I think I'm getting new shoots. So I'm going to keep it. There's another one. I'm going to keep it and see if it grows. The lemongrass also had the cold, but I've still got some green shoots in there, so I'll keep that protected. This is one of my favorites. It's a yakon. It is like a ground tuba. It's sweet. They call it a ground potato or ground apple. Sorry. They call it a ground apple, not a ground potato. <laughs> um, and it has these beautiful crisp and sweet, but not too sweet, um, tubers and you harvest them at the end of autumn. <laughs> I've got all these birds in my veggie patch pulling out all the worms. Um, yeah, you harvest them in, la in late autumn once all the foliage dies off. And it's just a great easy crop. 
I then separate the rest of the plants and I replant them and divide them. So I had one plant to begin with two years ago and now I've got about 20 plants. They do need regular watering, otherwise they, they won't have such a big harvest and the tubers won't be nice and juicy. But other than that, they are super, super easy. If you can see this, that my grains have fermented nicely. They started to bubble. And it smells like sweet, sweet, um, the beginnings of homebrew. So like very sweet, not sour yet. Um, so this is really good for the chickens, it's great for the digestion um, and it helps increase egg production because there's more nutrients in them. This is how much grains I would feed um, all my birds. So it's about half a 20 litre bucket. Um, I've got in one pan I've got the four, um, sorry the eight um, leghorns, so that's the seven hens and one rooster with four geese. And then I've got the four guinea fowl, the um, three isers with the one um, Barnavelda, I believe he is, rooster. And then I've got the five ducks. So this is how much food I'd go through a day. Um, but they are free ranging as well. So if they weren't being free range, they'll be eating a lot more food. Because they do put in all my garden um, weeds and they love going through that. And they scratch around for bugs and shoots and stuff like that. So um, it's quite a lot of food. I only get between two to five eggs a day at the moment, but we are in winter. Um, so the payoff, you know, it's not quite there yet, but they are older hens too. Um, but you know, it's, it's part of farming. You've got feed bills. Everyone needs to eat, not just us. If they were younger hens, we'd be getting way more eggs, but you know, and if they're on better pasture, they'll be getting more food from the ground, from the, um, from the land. But I want to keep them protected because I'm worried about the eagles and I'm worried about foxes too. But one day, maybe we'll get them out into pasture, maybe with electric fence and some sort of shelter. So we'll just see how we go. But for now, this area is working for us really well. It's right next to my veggie patch. I can throw in all my weeds, all my snails and stuff like that. And they love it. Um, yeah, so it's, this system's working really well at the moment. It may change down the, down the track, but this infrastructure was here. We don't need to build anything else. And, you know, why create more work for us when this is working at the moment? The veggie patch is doing really well. Everything's just about sprouted. With a few more sunny days, we'll get some really good growth. But we should get a harvest in a few months, um, especially the spinach. I could probably start picking some of those leaves. Um, especially in a day or two when they're a little bit bigger, it'll be baby spinach. Um, all the onions have popped up, the carrots are popping up, the garlic's doing really well, the peas, no, and potting peas are doing really well. I'm getting silver beet pop up through, um, beetroot, turnips, what else did I plant in here? Um, radishes, they're all popping up really well, so pretty exciting to see some growth in our um, little veggie patch here. All our strawberries are doing really well. I've started cleaning this area up. It's been a huge job. There's been so many weeds and so many raspberries overgrowing everywhere. So I'm pulling them out where they shouldn't be and I'm going to replant them in spots that I want them. Um, I found a heap of blueberries. I bought a blueberry bush and I wanted to buy more and I'm glad I didn't because I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blueberry bushes in here. So my ninth one will go in the spot where the other one died. Um, I'm not sure what this is. It's either a currant or a raspberry. Um, we've got a thornless blackberry up there, all these raspberries, and I believe there's a longanberry as well. So I'm not 100% sure where that is. Maybe that's what this thing is. I don't know. I don't know what they look like. Um, but I've got a bucket full of strawberries that I, um, that's full of strawberry crowns that I found all throughout here. I had bought 10 from the nursery a couple of weeks ago and I planted them already. If I had known that all these were there, I probably wouldn't have bought them because I don't need them. But we go through so many strawberries and really it's not an issue that I've got too many because 
I don't think we could ever have too many for this family. So all this um, front here, that's all going to be strawberries. The kids are going to adore that. I think we're going to be buried out by the time sum summer's over. I'll be able to preserve it and freeze them. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to keep planting them all through here. I've covered it with cow poop to try and get the, um, the soil life happening. What else? And oh yeah, I also brought some strawberries from home, from our old home, I should say. Um, I had bought some to put in the garden for all the photos. And because it's a veggie patch, I took them with me. Honestly, I don't think the guy that bought our house is going to garden. And it's a veggie patch, so you know, you harvest and you throw away your plants. Instead of throwing them away, I brought them with me. Um, so I had about 20 from there, I think. So I brought them all here as well. So this garden bed will have in excess of 50 strawberry plants, probably more like 60, 70. So if we can get a strawberry from each plant a day, that would be super awesome. Um, and I'm not sure if we could keep up with that. Maybe we could. You haven't seen my kids eat strawberries yet. <laughs> There are rosellas in the chicken pen. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get them out. <clears throat> I know that Squizzy would love to catch one, but last time they bit his finger quite badly. I'll link the video up above if I can. Um, they bit him about three times and only once they drew blood, but I really don't want him to get another injury. <laughs> but yeah, can you see them? They're right there. There's three of them in there. They must have come through the new chicken door down there. Try and let you out. They haven't gone into any of the other pens, so that's really weird that that's happened. So, anyway, I'll try and get them out. I'll open up the door and hopefully they'll go out the door. They're not tough, Quizzy. I'll be really sad I didn't tell him, but I don't want him to try and catch one and get hurt. It's all right. How'd you get? They're so noisy. <laughs> Let's see if I've got any eggs. There's no eggs. What's happening, guys? Slap it off on me. Sometimes I bury them. There's one here that's warm, so that's good. One egg! Ripped off! <laughs> Wonder if the other guys have laid me an egg. Let's go check. Let's see if these guys will fly out when I open the door. No, no, I don't want you guys out. Well, she's gone through the fence, so she's either going to get taken by an eagle or a fox. Maybe she'll come back. I don't know. There's an egg right by the door for me.
Fellas, I can't open the door otherwise. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the chickens will get out. I really don't want that, those roosters fighting, so I'm going to open up this door here. And there's an egg right by the door. Thank you, chickens. And then I'll open up this, and hopefully they can get out from here. Which I'm guessing is how they came in. I wonder where that chicken's gone. Stupid chicken. Okay. Now. This isn't all for you guys. It's all right. There's another egg in here, which is awesome. So I got three eggs today. I'm surprised the acorns didn't lay me more. I've got a silly chicken that lays on the floor. Now to feed the guineas. Not entirely sure where this chicken's gone. Down there, free ranging. She's down there, free ranging. So I'm going to try and pop over and bring it back. But it's like 40 acres down there that she can run away from me with. And to tell you the truth, I'm not really in the mood. For running. They managed to get a hey, little turd. Get out of there. I'll lock the chickens out into the chicken run and then I'll open up the, the door for them so they can fly out. 